Hi everybody, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be making the Pelican Tote, um, which is a free pattern by Bagstock Designs. Uh, so the pattern will be linked in the description box below. Just click the down bar um, to get the link to the free pattern. And it is a large tote bag. It looks bigger in person than it does on camera, um, but it is a nice good sized tote bag and it has a large zipper pocket on the front and then a uh, metal clasp um, or a magnetic clasp to close it um, and then large open inside with a another zipper pocket on the inside um, so this pattern is written to be either a nice sturdy bag which is interfaced with foam or you could leave off the foam and make it as like a fold foldable tote bag. Um, I'm doing something a little different. I am going to be using fusible fleece for the interfacing. Um, so basically all of the exterior pieces that you see, I just went ahead and um, before I started sewing anything, I went ahead and interfaced those with a layer of SF 101 or whatever uh, woven interfacing that you like. And then I did a layer of fusible fleece over top of that. So um, I'm hoping that that will still give the bag a little bit of structure while making it a little bit more um, domestic friendly, uh, domestic machine friendly. Um, the top stitching on this through the layers here using the foam was a little tough even on my Juki, which is a pretty strong machine. Um, especially like the thicker parts like with the vinyl over here you don't have to use vinyl but that's what I did and it, it just made it a little thick so I'm gonna try it out and see how it goes and you will see as the video progresses how this went the straps and all of the lining pieces I interface with just a layer of SF 101 or again whatever woven interfacing that you like to use um, but that is it and then the um, only hardware that you need are um, two zippers, one for the exterior and one for the lining, and then um, a little magnetic clasp. Uh, but that is it, pretty minimal. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and get started on the flaps here and just get those out of the way. Um, so I have marked, um, based on what the pattern says, where to put the um, med magnetic clasp. And I just have those little spots marked here. And then I also have um, a couple pieces of Decoville Heavy that I am using as additional stabilizer underneath where the magnetic clasp goes, um, just cause it's gonna get a lot of um, pull there. So just to kind of something extra to stabilize the fabric so that it doesn't tear after a while. Um, so just my preference, what I like to do. So I went ahead and um, just kind of marked the width of these on here so that they fit through. And then I'm going to go ahead and I have the two pieces just lined up here on top of each other and the one marked and I'm going to use a seam ripper. You could do these one at a time, but I'm just saving a little time. I'm just poking through and slicing it open with my seam ripper very, very carefully. The last time that I made this one. I used scissors and sliced my finger doing this. So that was lesson learned, use the seam ripper. And then we'll just go ahead and make sure, well, took from the correct side, make sure that it fits through and it does. And then same with the other piece, fits, looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and this particular one only has one washer, it looks like. Maybe I lost it, maybe there's another one somewhere. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the metal washer down first and then my Decoville Light, or I'm sorry, Decoville Heavy. And then go ahead and pinch those down. Yeah, yeah. Cutting. Okay, one side installed. And okay, found my other washer. I'm gonna put that one on. My other piece of Decoville Heavy. 
layered on there and then pinch it closed. And then we'll just test it out and make sure that they line up, which they do. Looks good. So now we just need to go ahead and sandwich the other two pieces together. And then we're gonna stitch around on both pieces, and then turn them right side out and top stitch. All right, and then just to get a nice um, rounded corner when we're turning it, we're gonna snip the curves on these flaps. So just get as close as you can to your stitching without cutting through your stitches. All right, now you can go ahead and flip it right side out. And then you can like, the scissors are too pointy, we'll use anything that does not have a pointy end. Use that to help push out the curves. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and give it a press with the iron um, to get it all laying nice and flat. And then top stitch around the outside edge. All right, so we end up with two pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and snip the center of these while I have them out. So I just fold it in half and then take, you can either, you know, snip down that way, but I just go and take a little notch out of it so that you can see very clearly where the center is. And that's just so that when we attach it to the bag, we already have the center marked so we know, you know, that we're lining it up in the middle of the bag. So now we are good to start assembling the bag. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take the front main panel piece here, um, the one that has the zipper on it, and we're gonna go ahead and take the longer of our two zippers and lay our zippers right side down on the top of that panel. Get my zipper out of the way. The pole's right in the way. And then baste it in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Zipper attached, and now we need the lining piece for that pocket, which is the longer of the, the long narrow lining piece here. And then we'll take that and lay that right side down over top of that seam that we just stitched. And then we'll attach this one. I like to flip it over so that the um, exterior is face up now so that I can see my basting stitches and make sure that I am coming in a little bit further than that. Okay. And now we can go ahead and we're going to fold this back, the exterior, fold them both back and then press that with the iron and then top stitch along the zipper. All right, so we got it top stitched. So now we'll take our lining piece, fold it up, aligning the zipper with the you know, bottom of the lining piece. And we'll attach it so that it goes on like that. And just aligning the edges so that the pocket is you know, aligned over here as well. and then I'll baste that in place. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the uh, top panel piece, or the top center panel piece, and lay that down on top of the zipper. And aligning the edges on either side as well again.
and then I'll flip it back over so that I can see my basting stitches on the lining this time and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch that down. So we're looking like this now with the pocket back here attached and then we'll fold this open or fold this up and you can press it with your iron and then top stitch again along the top zipper here. Right. And then I am also going to go ahead and um, baste the sides of the pocket down and I'm just going to go ahead and sew through both the lining pieces and the exterior just right along the edge there just to kind of tack all these pieces together. All right, and then I also basted through the zipper here, so that just makes it so that my zipper end or zipper pull does not fly off. Um, so it just kind of secures it in place. So now we need to take one of our uh, side pieces. Uh, let's see, these two. So coordinating or alternating, one going one way, one, whatever I'm trying to say. And then we're gonna attach it to the side over here. So you might have a little bit extra on the bottom, just depending on seam allowances. So I'm just gonna go ahead and center it a little bit so that I have a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on top. It'll even out within the seam allowances by the time I'm done. So you can see over here, it doesn't line up perfectly. And it doesn't line up perfectly over there either, and that's fine. It's no big deal. It will all even itself out. Okay, so I have both of those flaps on here, and then I'll just go ahead and stitch those down, open each side up, and then top stitch. Um, I think I'll press it with my iron too, um, but give it a press open after stitching, and then top stitch on the um, side panel pieces. You're gonna top stitch on that side of it. All right, so we got the front panel done, so now we can go ahead and move on to the back panel. So we'll set this one aside. No, I keep forgetting. First, I am going to mark the center of this one as well while I got this piece out. So I am matching up the two seams here where the side pieces connect. That is what I am matching up as the center or to find the center. Okay, center marked on that one. Now I can set aside. And we need the other two pieces here along with the back piece. And we'll just go ahead, same as we did on the front pieces, just go ahead and both of these pieces attach them like this. So open, press, top stitch. Same as we did on the front side. All right, I got all of that done and also marked the center on this one too. So now we'll go ahead and set those aside and start working on the lining. So I'm just gonna take one of the lining pieces for now and one of the zipper pocket pieces. And I am going to go ahead and fold it in half and just kind of give it a press with my hands to find the center. And then same with this piece. Find the center. And then I am going to line the centers up. So I'm gonna lay it right side down. I think the pattern has you do it slightly different, but this is the way that I am doing it. So I lay the pattern, or I'm sorry, I lay the lining piece right side up with the zipper pocket down. And then align the top edge of the fabric here with the top edge of the zipper and the centers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, instead of drawing the box 
that it has in the zipper or in the pattern. Instead of drawing the box on the lining piece, I'm gonna draw it on the zipper pocket piece. And I need my other ruler. I am using number five a zipper. So I'm actually going to do a half inch box instead of three eighths inch. So I'm just going to draw one line and then a half inch down, draw another line. Connect them. And shift it, so now I need to move it again. There, and there. I'm just gonna pop a couple of pins in it so that it stays in place. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stitch around that box. Ow, don't stab yourself. Okay. We got our box all stitched together. Now we just need to cut it open. So you can use a seam ripper if you're more comfortable with that. What I do is just fold the fabric together in half like this and just make a little snip so I know that I'm not cutting through anything that I'm not meaning to. And then just snip right down the center. And then I just eyeball it when I get to about a half or a quarter inch from the edge. I just go ahead and snip into the corner and then into the other corner and then down the other side. So we got a box that's looking like this with the corners cut like that. And then we need to take this, flip it through here so that all of that zipper pocket is now on the wrong side of the main lining piece and then give that a press with the iron. All right, this next step is just a little bit easier for me personally with my table on because I don't like to pin or anything and my machine doesn't do well with double-sided tape. So I just kind of hold it in place and the extra space of the table is helpful. So we're gonna take our zipper. If you care which direction your zipper is going, then keep that in mind. I usually go with the zipper opening to the right. That's just me. But we're just gonna go ahead and take the zipper and lay it down with the teeth centered in that box there. So basically what I do is just kind of hold it in place and make sure that the edges are lined up. I like to cut my zipper a little bit longer. I'm not sure how long it's recommended in the pattern, but I like to cut it the same size as the width of the fabric so that I am sewing through either end of the zipper when I am you know, sewing the whole pocket together. Um, it just, I feel like it gives the zipper better security so that it doesn't fray. Uh, so that's what I do. But again, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold the zipper in place and slide it over. And now my presser foot is holding it in place. And then I just start sewing. So that's how I do my zippers. If it's easier for you to pin it, by all means do that. Um, my zippers never turn out great when I pin them, so that's why I don't. And 
And then again, I'm just realigning it and making sure it's all lined up nicely. And then I'm coming up to the end here and my pull is right on the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it back from underneath, back past my presser foot so that it is out of my way. And then pinch the ends of the zipper closed here and then I'm just holding it in place with my fingers. Backstitch. And I'll trim my starting threads. And these ones back here. And there we go. Zipper pocket is installed. And you can see the zipper comes all the way over to the side here. So when I put this piece on and stitch it in place, it is gonna sew right through there so that these ends are secured and it doesn't start like fraying inside. All right, so we'll just align all of the edges of the exterior pocket. And you're gonna stitch all the way around on three sides. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sew just a little bit on the sides over here. Um, that's just how I like to do the zipper pockets, but you are going to leave an opening in the zipper pocket because we're going to go ahead and turn the bag through the zipper pocket. Um, so that makes the, uh, the main lining of the bag sit a little bit nicer. Um, and then the seam where we close it all up is hidden inside the pocket. So that's what we're going to do. As you're stitching, you're just pulling the main lining piece out of your way so you know that you're not stitching over it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and clip the corners. It just takes away some of the bulk when I am trying to um, stitch this uh, closed. All right, so we have stitching. I just did a little bit here, but you can leave it. I just, the corner doesn't poke out as nicely when you don't stitch a little bit right there, and it kind of bugs me. So I'm just picky, whatever. Um, but we sew all the way the rest of the pocket and just leave the bottom here. So we have a nice pocket that at the moment is open and we will go ahead and close that up in just a little bit. Now on all your pattern pieces or on all of your pieces, my dog just walked in, um, the pattern has you draw a little dart right here that we're going to go ahead and sew and that helps. It doesn't box the bottom, but it kind of rounds the bottom out um, so that it kind of stands upright a little bit more. So what we're going to do is just fold this piece so that the two lines that you drew fold up and match together here. And then we're just gonna stitch this line right here on all four pieces on both corners. All right, so now we need to go ahead and trim off all of the little tabs. Now on the two lining pieces, on both corners of the two lining pieces, I did do a slightly a uh, bigger piece that I am cutting out um, just so that the lining ends up being slightly smaller in the end um, so that it sits nicely inside the bag. So you can see here's the line that I drew and then I did like an eighth of an inch further into the bag, not further this way, but further this way um, that I stitched just, um, you know, like I said, it makes it, it makes the lining just a little bit smaller so that it sits nicely inside the bag. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip off that off of all of the pieces. All right, so I got all four pieces here now, both exterior and both lining. I'm going to go ahead and set these aside and work on my straps. So the straps are super easy. We are just going to go ahead and do pretty standard straps, uh, folded in half to get the center mark. And then we're going to fold each of the pieces in to the center so that it's looking like that. 
and then fold it in half again so that the raw edges are folded inside and then we'll top stitch on either side and we'll press this with an iron you know make it easier um, so we'll go ahead and do that all right so this is what I got after pressing with the iron so the raw edges are folded up inside folded once and then folded again and hidden here and we're just going to go ahead and top stitch on either side all the way down we don't need to worry about the top here because that is going to be encased in the bag all right so now i'm going to go ahead and take my lining and my two lining pieces and i will be putting them right sides together and clipping not along the top but all the rest of the edges aligning the two corners here so I'm just, you can go ahead and butterfly the two open. I'm just gonna go ahead and nest the seams um, cause that's what's easiest for me. So I'm gonna do those first to make sure that they line up. And then just do the rest of it and we'll just clip all the way around. All right, so I am clipped the entire way around and we don't need to leave a hole in the opening because we left a hole open in the zipper pocket. So we're turning it through here. We don't need to leave a hole in the lining. So what I am going to go ahead and do though, so that again, it's a nice snug fit. I am going to start out at that half inch seam allowance, but as I come down the side here, once I get about a third to a halfway down the side, I'm going to go ahead and slowly start veering over and increasing my seam allowance to about 5 eighths inch seam allowance. And I'm about a half of the way up, so now I'm gonna start working my way back over to that half inch seam allowance. Okay. And then just trim down the seam allowance. So we got our lining assembled. We'll set that aside and we will do the exact same thing to the exterior, except this time we're just gonna keep that half inch seam allowance the entire way around. And then as I'm clipping, I am also aligning this, the seam right here on both sides, making sure that those line up as well as the corner seams. And then I'll just put a clip right in that seam there. All right, so we're all clipped and we'll just go ahead and sew around. All right, so the exterior is now done also. And I am gonna go ahead and take, uh, I need to trim my seam allowances first. Okay, seam allowance trimmed down. And now I'll go ahead and just turn both pieces right side out. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get out our little flappy pieces. And we're gonna take our lining and match up the centers of one of the pieces and we're gonna lay it out like this because when the bag is When the bag is like this, we want it over here and this piece over here so that they can go ahead and go together and close. So you could leave it turned wrong side out, but I don't know. I just find it easier this way. 
so if you care which side has the male part versus the female part, then, you know, keep that in mind. But I don't really think it matters all that much. I'm just going to clip this and just make sure that you're aligning the centers of both of the pieces. Um, so I did, I don't think I mentioned it, but when I was cutting out these pieces, all of the lining and everything, I did go ahead and mark the centers of the lining because I could do that right off the bat as soon as I was done cutting and interfacing. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and baste that in place, making sure that you're not sewing through anything other than what you are intending to sew through. So on the outside, we have both of those basted in place. So we can set this aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our straps. And I am gonna go ahead and put them, I believe the pattern said to put them, yeah, like right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and baste those in place, leaving maybe like a half or a quarter inch overhang. Um, on this piece here, I have some of the selvage, so I need to make sure that that is out of my seam. So I'm just aligning the edge of the strap right with the edge of the seam here. And then I'll do that on both sides. table cut. So we just want to make sure that our straps are, you know, aligned nicely, look okay. They're the same length if you may have did the seam allowances a little differently, whatever. All right. And now we can go ahead and put it together. So I think what I am going to do is turn the exterior wrong side out. Make sure the straps are in there and down out of your way. And then I'm going to take the lining right side out and go ahead and, and you can determine if you want the um, zipper pockets both on the same side or on opposite sides. I think I'm going to do opposite sides. And I'll just go ahead and insert that and align the center seams on the front and the back. And then align the corner seams. And again, you can butterfly them or nest the seams, whichever is easier for you to do. And then just go ahead and fill in clips all the rest of the way around. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and stitch the entire way around. go ahead and back stitch over the straps and that center connector just a couple times just to give it a little extra security.
Okay, and I am not gonna go ahead and trim the seam allowance on this, um, but I am gonna go ahead and just trim off the little extra pieces from the strap. All right, so time to turn it all right side out. So I'm gonna pull the lining out and then through the zipper here, which I didn't mention needs to be open and I did not. Let's see if I can get it open. Good thing for nails, I can open it. Okay, open zipper pocket and we're just gonna go ahead and very gently pull everything out through that zipper pocket. Poke out those corners. While we're here, I'm gonna give my straps and my magnetic strap thing some good tugs just to make sure I got it all and the straps are the everything is nice and secure because if it's not secure I would rather know now than before I top stitch or sew anything closed but everything seems to be okay everything looks okay in my zipper pocket on the exterior so before I close up my opening in the zipper pocket. I just want to make sure that I'm going to be okay to top stitch this because there's some parts that might get, it probably shouldn't be too bad. I don't think it'll be that thick, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to be too thick. If I'm struggling too much, I might go and trim down my seam allowance, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. But I'm just going to hold off on closing up the opening just to make sure. So we'll go ahead and push all of that lining into the exterior. And then since I am using all cotton, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a press with my iron just to get a nice crisp edge on everything to top stitch. All right, so I gave it a press and now I'm gonna go ahead and just clip everything in place so that it holds it together while I'm trying to top stitch. And these flaps here, when we are top stitching, we are gonna to wanna to fold them down and top stitch through them. We don't wanna to top stitch above like this. We want them pinned down so that they stay in place. Um, so that part can get a little bulky. I think I am gonna put my walking foot on my machine just because it tends to help with some of the bulkiness. All right, we'll see how this goes. And I am gonna go ahead and top stitch from the top side of it so that I can see what I'm doing because that's the stitches that you're gonna see more so I feel like, so. Solid, no skipped stitches. Well, that's not the prettiest, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Worked out nicely. Bag closes. So there we go. We got the snap closure. It is not baggy, as you can see inside. I mean, it's quilt cotton, so it is going to be a little bit, but it sits nicely in there, um, which is why we do the seam allowances that way on the lining, um, so that it sits nicely. So now all that is left is closing up the bottom here. So all we got to do is, I just poke out these corners, makes it a little bit easier. Fold this in so that the seam is nice and flush with what we already sewed. 
and I'm just pressing it with my fingers. I don't feel like getting up and going to my iron because it's 9.30 and I'm tired and being lazy. That's about it. Okay, and we just need to go ahead and sew that up at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Smaller stitch. in those corners easier to do now than when the pocket is inside shove the pocket in there it up all right and there we go we are done so a nice zipper pocket on the front, and this is a nice deep pocket. You can throw your phone in or whatever. But this is a great little tote bag you can use for travel, um, great teacher gifts, um, or, you know, if you're going into an office or something and, you know, have, you know, notebooks or, you know, whatever paperwork that you got to take with you, this is great for that. Um, and it is a domestic friendly way to get a nice sturdy bag. It stands up on its own. Well, it doesn't balance well, but you know, there you go. It's not slouchy, but it will still kind of fold up if you need it to, but then it just pops right back open. So there we go. So let me know in the comments down below if you have attempted this bag or if you plan on making one. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, let me know down in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for other videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.